Hi, my name is Amanda Lahn from Proud Designs at Ainsbury Freelance Florist. Uh, you're joining me today on behalf of the Melton City Council from the Learning Directory. Um, and we're learning today how to make a vase arrangement at home. So today I've brought a square, more of a medium to tall vase that we're gonna work with. You can use obviously all different types of vases. I find something that has more of a narrow top is easy to work with. If you've got vases that sort of come out at the top, they are a lot more hard and you need a lot more foliage and flowers to feel. So a good size, narrow all the way up is a lot easier to work with. So I tend to prep all my flowers before I start. Um, so that might be um, stripping all the foliage from the base, which we've spoke about on some of my previous videos. Um, so we have no foliage in the water so it doesn't discolour and, and murk the water up quicker. So it just lasts a little bit longer. So again, we're gonna start with our foliage base. So all our foliage goes in first, and then we'll place our flowers into where we want them to step. So um, I've just, again, got all the foliage out of the garden. So I'm sure at home, if you raided your gardens or your neighbor's gardens like I have, um, this none of this has been brought. This is all from garden. So just try and place them in there. Um, again, try and keep your stems as low as you can so you know that they're drinking water all the time, not so much up here where they're just gonna fall out. Um, and sort of just a bit messy and just place them in. Um, so you're getting a base for your flowers to stick into. Um, so it's not like our previous arrangement where we did the pot arrangement so you've got the oasis for it to stick into. So we're just placing it in, getting a bit of a base look sort of happening. And then I sort of build up and get a little bit more height up through the top. So again, using different foliages, try not to stick with one foliage. I think the more different varieties you use there. I think it just looks a little bit nicer to have a variety. So again, just placing them all in there. Bit of a messy look, don't stress too much about it at the start because you can tweak it as you go. I've got some beautiful wattle here as well. I'm gonna place some of that up there. And again, have them sticking out so we get a bit of width going on. Again, just stripping the foliage of the base. So we're getting a little bit of direction up the top as well. And again, some little smaller ones through the middle there. What else have we got here? And so if you've got a stem where you've got these little pieces, it's just easy just to cut the little pieces off. So I use everything, I don't waste anything. So even if you've got two smaller pieces and you find well, that just too small for the vase, keep all your little bits and pieces spare, strip them down. So then you can do just like a small little posy that you can put in a bathroom or a bedside table. So I never waste anything. So you can always use everything, even your little small pieces. Um, all right, so we've got a bit of a base foliage going on there. I've run out of a bit of foliage today. So have a little bit of a look there. So that's our, our base of just using some foliage and placing in. So you can see it's quite um, full now. So that gives us a bit of direction to, to place our flowers in so they'll sit nicely. So I've got today some roses, some noreen, uh, some leucanidinum, some gerberas, a bit of kale. Um, so we've got a few bits and pieces, some LA lilies. So we'll just place again, I like to start off a bit tall. So again, placing your flowers next to the vase or your pot arrangement or whatever you're making and just cut it to the size to where you think you might want it to go. So if we put a lily in at the top there, need some leucodendrons off to the side. Maybe some roses. So again, trying to push them all the way to the bottom of the vase. So they're getting lots of water. Oh, it's not looking so far trying to work backwards. Maybe another rose through here. Getting a bit of a look happening there. Um, gerberas, so these are great because they come in a huge range of colours and they're a bit of fun and they add a nice big filler to a vase. Um, I tend to put a little bit of wire, which you can get some floristry wire from your local florist, which I normally, which I'm sorry, I forgot to bring today, especially for gerberas because they do tend to flop um, after a while. So with a little bit of wire poked up the base and just wrapped around the stem can keep them holding upright quite, quite nice for a longer time. But we're just gonna poke them in, but in saying that in a vase, you find if you poke it in, it's sitting in the foliage, that will give it um, the fullness it needs, like it shouldn't flop sitting up against the, the flowers there. So we'll put a bigger one at the back there. And let's face it, who doesn't love gerberas? They're great. They've got lots of pops of colour. They're great. So again, using the same as my previous videos, 
probably sets of three always works well. So just using odd numbers more than even. Um, it's just the floristry way, that's how it works. And it does look a little bit better when you do a combination. So again, we're just still building through there. A bit more height so you can use a bit more Lizzie. Get a bit of height up through the back. So it's pretty much just starting up tall and then coming down a little bit lower. Maybe one on this side. And then we've got the beautiful kale at the moment, which is beautiful, comes in a huge range of colours. And it is, it's like a cabbage, the kale. And um, that works quite well in arrangements as well. So where can we put that one? Maybe up through the middle there. So again, just measuring next to the vase to the height that you want to require the flower to go into. And then we place that in the vase. So again, your flowers will move around as you might poke one in, another one will move. So sometimes you might have to pull one back out and just reposition and move it to where it wants to stay or be a little bit happier. Just giving you a bit of an idea there. Bit of a messy look today, but I'm trying to show you from a front view. I'm just poking them in as you go into the different spots and filling the gaps. And we've got some carnations. Which are again a nice cheap flower. Now most of these flowers you can just purchase, you know, Safeway, Coles, um, your local florist. Um, so if you can grab either a couple of different mixed stems to make your own, um, because most things come in bunches. So if you can get a couple of different stems of different things to be able to make this at home, or if you've just got, hopefully you're lucky enough to have some nice roses and things in your garden at home. Um, these are beautiful, the marine. And they smell amazing. It's always nice to have fresh flowers in the house. One, they just, they're nice to look at. They smell amazing. Um, and they just make you feel nice. And also obviously, they're a lovely gift to give to someone that's not having a, having a good week. All right, so again, that's sort of roughly, if you find some are a bit higher, we can trim little bits and pieces off to make it work so it's a little bit more even around the base. Let's give you an idea how you're just putting different things in, working out the space that you want them in and just cutting them to the, to the shape that you require. And again, you can see that there's no foliage in the base. You've just got the stems and it's nice and clear. So we might put this last one in here. So it's a bit similar to the mason jar setup. So you just have your water and you build your foliage and then you're just adding your bits and pieces in at the end and just filling the gaps. Uh, we've got a few more carnations here. We can put this one in here, somewhere over there. So again, we've got a bit of a mixed variety. Flowers are really hard to get at the moment due to COVID, unfortunately. Um, so we're getting them all shipped in from other countries and there's a bit of a, um, a cargo freight war happening at the moment. So we're struggling. You'll probably find the prices of flowers have actually gone up nearly double. Um, and that's obviously not due to the florist. It's just due to the demand of trying to get stock into the country. So, but I was lucky enough to get a few varieties this, this morning for our shoot. But don't be surprised if it's going to be like that for a while before we start getting our full flow of regular flowers in. So that's giving you a little bit of an idea of how we work with just the mixed flowers. So hopefully you enjoy that and, um, and have a couple of goes. So then pull it out again and restart and have a bit more of a play. So the more you do it, if you do it two or three times, then you'll find it'll just flow um, nice and easy. But that looks a bit tricky, but it's actually surprisingly quite easy. So I hope you enjoyed my video today on how to make an arrangement in a vase. And yeah, please have a, have a try at home and um, send your videos through or pictures through to Proud Designs. I'd love to see your work. So that's a wrap for our vase arrangement for today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. So jump on to the um, Melton City Council Learning Directory website through Facebook and they have YouTube and a few other social um, media areas where they air these videos. Um, anything from cooking shows to making your own flowers. Um, if you watch next week's video, I'm making terrariums, which are so much fun to make. Um, but yeah, jump on board and have a look and share these around, especially because we can't get out in this sort of climate. Um, so it's great to be able to do some things from home. If you're homeschooling, which I know I am with three children, um, we have lots of breaks and we try and make things from home. And yeah, the channel's been amazing to make your own cheese, to tie cooking. So yeah, check it out. And thanks for having me today. See ya.